I hit the bounce. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and in this video, I'm here at Wad Prep headquarters, but I'm gonna show you how to develop handstand push-up strength with zero equipment, or very, very minimal equipment. All you're going to really need here are maybe a couple books. If you have textbooks, they'll finally be useful. So we're gonna teach you a step-by-step -step progression on how you can develop handstand push-up strength, and we're gonna walk through it. And again, you don't need any equipment. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm also going to give you a free resource guide where you can learn more about how to develop handstand push-ups, both strict, kipping, and maybe even some handstand walk stuff. So stick around to the end, and I will show you exactly where to get the goods. So we're gonna work through seven different levels. It's like a seven level progression that I use to teach athletes how to do handstand push-ups if you don't have any equipment. So the first thing that we're gonna practice is actually what's called a wall walk. And you might be familiar with this. There's several different levels of difficulty, but the first thing we need to do is kind of get comfortable getting upside down. Not everyone can just kick up into a handstand. So for those of you who need to work on being upside down, here's a great way to do it. All I'm gonna do is find my handy dandy wall. I'm gonna lay on the floor. And then all I'm going to do is walk myself up. So I'm walking my hands and feet up to the wall. Now. If you can't get all the way up to the wall, if you can't get your nose to touch the wall, maybe getting completely inverted is too difficult for you, you can always just go to a 45 degree angle and then work your way up from there. So you can do what's called a partial wall walk. So instead of walking all the way up, maybe I'll just get comfortable going to a 45 degree angle and kind of hang out here. Being, being able to stay in this position and be comfortable and being able to talk while you're upside down is a great sign that you're ready to move on to level two. So level one, we're trying to get our nose all the way to the wall, try to get comfortable just being upside down, even if it's just for a brief period of time, and then you can come down, and then it's time to move on to level two. Level two, we're simply gonna practice the handstand push-up kick up. So again, all you need is a wall here, and if you can easily kick up onto the wall, then congratulations, you've you're already at level two, and that's really good. So here's what it looks like. I am already comfortable being upside down. I'm gonna stand a few feet away from the wall, maybe almost a body length. Then from here, I'm going to step in with arms completely locked out. If you're, if you're scared to get upside down and kick up into a handstand, we actually do have another video that we released on YouTube and on Facebook, and it's a video specifically about developing a kick up. So it goes into more detail, but the main points of performance that I'm looking at is my elbows are completely locked out, my shoulders are prepared to carry that weight, and then I make sure that I keep one leg extended as I pivot up to the wall. So here's what it looks like. Hands planted about a foot away from the wall, um, a third of a meter for the Europeans and, and people, everyone else in the world that uses the metric system. Um, I apologize when I use the, the American system. But a foot away from the wall, I'm keeping my arms locked out and I kick up. So again, arms locked out, I keep my first foot, first leg long, so my leading leg is staying extended, hands planted, kick up. And in this position, I'm just focusing on squeezing my glutes, squeezing my quads, actively pressing into the floor, and I'm keeping my elbows extended. The goal here is just to practice kicking up, coming back down, kicking up, coming back down. If you can get used to doing that frequently and without any hesitations, without any problems, then you are done with level two and you're ready to move on to level three. Level three, all I'm going to do is kick up into that handstand and hold it. So there really is no standard for how long you should be holding for, but I would say in order to graduate from level three, you need to be able to hold this handstand hold for at least 30 seconds pretty easily. I would say maybe even a minute to show that your shoulders have the, stam the stamina, stability, and strength to be upside down. So again, remember those points of performance for level two, which is the kick up, hands planted, arms locked out. I'm going all the way up and then I'm just gonna hang out here. I don't want you to be loosey goosey. I don't want you to let your arms sag. I want you to have everything, a straight line from your hands all the way to your toes and just hang out here. You should be able to hang out here for quite some time. Blood will rush to your head. And if you can hang out there for over 30 seconds, then you are ready to move on to level four. Hey there, YouTube. I'm upside down right now and I'm gonna hold this handstand until you click the subscribe button. Since I'm upside down, I don't really know where it is on the screen. Maybe it's over there, maybe it's over there, but if you could, just hit the subscribe button. 
Level four is the partial range of motion handstand push-up. We will be practicing strict here because this is all about developing strength. So the partial range of motion handstand push-up simply involves kicking up onto the wall and doing handstand push-ups with a much, much smaller range of motion than a normal RX one. Now I'm going to demonstrate using some of the equipment that I do have, but before you yell at me in the comments and say, I thought you said there was no equipment, you can use books, you can use multiple sweatshirts, you can use pillows, basically anything squishy that you can put underneath your head that has various heights. Get creative. I promise you that you can do this with anything laying around your house. I've done, I've done this personally with pillows stacked on top of textbooks or just normal books. So all I'm going to do, if you do have access to plates, then plates could work great. I'm going to grab two greens, two 25 pound competition plates. And then I have, this is just a traditional, you know, ab mat or whatever brand you have. Um, and I'm going to put this so right now I've created a, a decent height, like this is several inches. When I kick up into my handstand, now I'm not going to have to move nearly as far. So we're kicking up into the handstand position. And then from here, when I do my handstand push up, you'll notice I'm coming down, coming back up, coming down, coming back up. I'm really only moving a little bit. I'm not moving more than just a few inches. If this is too difficult, I could even add a third plate. So watch what happens when I add just a little bit more height, keep everything stacked. You'll notice that now I'm moving even less. So what's cool about this is these partial range of motion handstand push-ups are completely scalable to your ability level. You could move so little that you're just kind of shrugging your shoulders. You can move so much that you're almost going to full range of motion. But the goal here for level four is to practice with a partial range of motion and then slowly but surely work your way to level five. I'm gonna keep holding until you hit the subscribe button. My elbows are starting to bend, but just hit the subscribe button and I'll get to kick down from the handstand hold. For level five, we are going to do what I call a handstand push-up negative. This is another great drill because it's pretty much infinitely scalable, just like level four was with the partial range of motion handstand push-ups. So the handstand push-up negative is just like a negative pull-up or a negative squat or a negative bench press or a negative of anything. We're developing strength by only doing the lowering part of the movement. So here's what it looks like. This is going to be the hardest version of it. I'm just going to do it on the wall, kick up, and then from here, I'm just gonna lower myself down pretty much as slowly as I possibly can into this tripod position, nice and slow. And as soon as the crown of my head touches, I kick back down. Now, if that is too difficult, which it will be for many of you, and that's totally fine, what we don't want to happen is for you to get halfway down and then you just collapse because you don't have the strength. So what I would suggest as you're working on level five and you're practicing these negatives is add that squishy thing underneath your head, whatever your squishy thing is. In fact, in the comments right now, go down below and tell me what your squishy thing is going to be. Keep it at least PG-13, please. This is YouTube people and Facebook. Um, so my squishy thing is just gonna be this squishy ab mat. I'm gonna put it underneath my head and now you'll notice when I do the negative, it's a much slower or much smaller range of motion. So I'm coming all the way down, my head touches, and then I'm relaxing. So the reason this is infinitely scalable is again, I can change how much range of motion I have to do my negative. I can also change the amount of time I'm spending under tension. So a few of those were, I don't know, maybe five seconds. You could try a 10 second handstand push-up negative. You could try a 20 second handstand push-up negative. It's really infinite. What I would suggest not doing is just completely collapsing. And <laughs> Kyle, 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 call 911. Right. No, I'm not good. Call 911. Call 911. <laughs> so make sure you start with something soft underneath your head and then slowly but surely you can remove that range of motion or you can remove that object to add range of motion to your reps. And then if you really wanna get fancy with it, you can add in a deficit. So let's say I remove the squishy and then let's say I add more plates or more textbooks or more uh, stacks of something, uh, benches, whatever, whatever you have at your house, again, doesn't have to use fitness equipment. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to practice a negative where I go all the way past 
what would be my bottom position, my true tripod position for the handstand push-up, I'm lowering myself slightly below that. What this is going to do is this is going to help the athletes who struggle getting out of the bottom of their handstand push-ups, which is pretty much everyone on strict handstand push-ups. Getting out of the bottom is really difficult. So what we're gonna do to develop that strength, rather than just doing normal handstand push-ups, we're gonna do a negative from a deficit. So here I have this deficit. I'm lowering myself down. Normally about right here is where my head would hit, but I still have a few inches of range of motion and then I'm coming down. So all we're doing is we're expanding, we're adding more range of motion to the negative. That's gonna help you develop even more strength and stability at the end range of our movements. And yes, obviously, I don't need to show you, I could stack more plates on top to make this even more difficult. So that is level five. Now let's move on to level six. I'm barely holding on here. I'm upside down and I'm barely barely holding just a couple more of you need to subscribe hit the subscribe button immediately Ooh. the middle of my back is actually cramping level six all we are going to use is an ab mat so before you argue with me again in the comments you you argue versus you this is just a more difficult iteration of the partial range of motion handstand push-ups that we did back in level four. It's just, uh, I'd say, a good standard. If you do happen to have an ab mat, if you happen to have um, something that's just, just a little bit of elevation, just a couple inches, all that this level is, level six, is just practicing with a pad. So all I'm doing is I'm doing my handstand push-ups. There's still partial range of motion, but it's just pretty much an entire handstand push-up. It's just very, very close to being that full range of motion. So as we work with the level five deficit negatives and then also work the very big partial range of motion handstand push-ups, I would say that would constitute a good level six. And then obviously, last but not least, level seven, you're probably not gonna believe this, but level seven is simply doing a handstand push-up. So if you have these textbooks and you have a squishy thing that you don't wanna hurt your head on, you can always just put your platform, make sure that it's level with whatever pad you're using. And then obviously we can do handstand push-ups. This is level seven. Now, if you're super hardcore, obviously, the standard is a level platform, so if you're hardcore, then your level seven can be without any pad. Just be careful when you're smashing your head into the ground, we tend not to want to do that very quickly. I wouldn't really use the tap and go method where you're trying to bounce your head out of the bottom for level seven, but <sighs> I hope that you like this video. We covered seven different steps with several little variations to help you learn handstand push-ups with strength at home with zero equipment. So if you like this video, make sure you click the link in the comments below. I've pinned a comment for you, or you can look in the description. I have a link there where you can download a free handstand push-up training tutorial. We have a few more videos and a lot of great content that I love to send to you for free. All you have to do is enter your name and email and I will send that to you for free. We also have some handstand walk development. If you're interested in that, I'll make sure to throw that link below there. And we do have two eight week step-by-step -step training courses that you might be interested in. One is called Handstand Push-Up Power and the other is called Handstand Walk Hero. And we actually are just about to release a brand new, at the time of shooting, we have a brand new course called Confident Kickups. So whether you're someone who struggles with just kicking up to the wall, if you're someone who struggles with, with doing these handstand push-ups, both kipping and strict, or if you're someone who already has those and maybe you wanna move on to handstand walks or add that to your RX arsenal, then all of those links will be below. And if they're still open for enrollment, you can join them today. And we guarantee that it's gonna help you have handstand push-up success. So remember in the comments below, let me know what your squishy object was that you want to use or that you found at your house. I would prefer it if you didn't use children or cats or dogs. Um, it tends to be inanimate objects like pillows, but let us know what your squishy object is that you're doing your handstand push-ups to. Also, I'd love to know which level are you at? Are you level one? Are you level seven? Let me know in the comments below. I will read every single one. And also I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh. Man, it's actually exhausting. <laughs> It's like, it's actually difficult when you like have to like flex your back and put your arms over your head. It's very tough. It's very difficult. They should subscribe. <laughs>